Our array of game objects that represent the cannonballs the player can shoot are being updated properly in the update call, but there's currently no way to fire a cannonball. We're going to create one. The first thing we need to do is establish a way for the player to fire a cannonball using the controller or keyboard. Since there are only three cannonballs that can be active at once, we want to limit how fast the player can fire the cannonballs. Let's start at the top of game1.cs where we've declared our variables. Find where you created the cannonballs game object array and add a new line below that. Then add the following line. Gamepad state Previous gamepad state equals gamepad dot get state open parenthesis player index dot one close parenthesis semicolon keyboard state Previous keyboard state equals keyboard dot get state open parenthesis close parenthesis semicolon. These variables will help us judge how the player is interacting with the controller or keyboard. Each update call, we will store the previous update calls gamepad state and keyboard state in these variables, and check the current state against it. You'll see how this will come in handy soon. Now, go to the update method. A quick way to find it is to use the method selector, which is located just above the code window in the right hand box. Inside this method, scroll down until you find the code you use to clamp the rotation of the cannon. After this line, add a new line, then add the following. If, open parenthesis, gamepad state, dot buttons, dot a, equals sign, equals sign, Button state dot pressed ampersand ampersand previous gamepad state dot buttons dot a equals equals button state dot released close parenthesis, open curly brace, fire cannonball, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, semicolon, close curly brace. Fire cannonball will be a new method we'll create. For now, look at the if statement. Gamepad state is the current state of the controller this update call. We want to know if the A button is currently held down. The double ampersands mean that for the conditional to be true, the statement after the ampersands must also be true. This is called a logical AND. The second statement says that in the previous gamepad state, the A button must not have been held down. The only time this can be true is if the player just pressed the A button. They cannot fire multiple cannonballs by just holding down the A button. This statement will restrict the player to semi-automatic fire with their cannon, as fast as they can release and press the A button. Let's do the same for keyboard input, using the space key. If, open parenthesis, keyboard state dot is key down open parenthesis 
keys dot space close parenthesis ampersand ampersand previous keyboard state dot is key up open parenthesis keys dot space close parenthesis close parenthesis open curly brace fire cannonball open parenthesis close parenthesis semicolon close curly brace before we go on to creating the fire cannonball method we must do one very important thing make sure after we've done all of our input processing we update the previous gamepad state and previous keyboard state. Scroll down to the bottom of update and just below the call to base.update, add a line and then add the following. Previous gamepad state equals gamepad state. Pound if exclamation point all uppercase Xbox previous keyboard state equals keyboard state pound and if. This updates the previous states to the current state. The next update call, the process will repeat, checking current state against previous state, and setting the previous state to be the current state, and so on. We've done the work we need to an update. Let's make the fire cannonball method. <laughs> 